what is up you guys it's your girl Dinche and welcome to my channel so in today's video I am going to be talking about some of the few things I wish I had known about being natural before actually starting my natural hair journey I'm going to try and keep everything nice and simple and I hope you guys will enjoy this video so let's So the first thing that I do wish I had known about being natural, okay, I have known about this, but um, I didn't really understand it, which is shrinkage, to be honest. Shrinkage scared me, okay, it, it, it traumatized me when I first started out, because I've never been exposed to anybody who actually did suffer from shrinkage, and I, even though I knew the term, I didn't actually understand it until I started my natural hair journey, because one moment... You know, my hair was long, and then the next, when it's dry, it's like really small. <laughs> I never understood that process. And then, you know, and I put it, and I'm like, but you're long. Why are you, why are you hiding? So that was something that took a while to get used to. However, now that I'm used to it, I actually prefer it more than I prefer stretching out my hair. I don't know why. I just feel like my hair is so much more healthier it looks i don't know it just looks so much stronger when it has a shrinkage on it and you know i like fooling people because today i have short hair tomorrow i have a high path explain that <laughs> and it's natural it's mine i didn't buy uh a, a, a what are they called a, you know the extensions bun thing in bulk so yeah that was that was something that took a while to get used to however um, I learned that shrinkage is healthy, so if you have shrinkage, love thy shrinkage. If you don't have shrinkage, good for you. <laughs> is X no products? Yes, products. Why am I saying this? Um, products I did mention in my previous video. Um, okay, not my previous video, but the video where I spoke about uh, how I grew my hair in 2020 is that, um, there are products that will work for you and there are products that will not work for you. Even though they are said to be naturally approved or curly girl hair approved. Um, mm, mm, just because it works for me, it may not work for you. Just because it works for you, it may not work for me. So sometimes you literally just have to go searching in the market to find something that will work for your hair. So yeah, like do not have any expectations when it comes to products. Just cross your fingers and pray to God and just be like, Father, let this be the one because I'm broke. <laughs> um, so yeah. Yeah, just when it comes to products, not everything is going to work for you. It may work for your friend, but it may not work for you. And there was something that I didn't necessarily have to learn. I mean, I guess I kind of figured it out, but um, I, I, I did low-key experience it because some of the products that Excuse me. Some of the products that I had bought for my mom, uh, for her natural hair, mm, does not work for mine. It it doesn't. It was a it was an epic fail. So I honestly had to buy my own products and stick to what I know or what I know is good for my hair. So yeah. The third thing, oh guys, this is the important thing actually. Expectations. Please lower your expectations when it comes to natural hair, because especially right now we. So many people are using the wrong terms and wrong, you know, groups to identify their hair because you get type 3 C people identifying themselves as, you know, 4 C. And then when you're looking at that, you kind of like think to yourself, oh, you know, if I go natural, that's how my hair is going to be like because, you know, I'm, a, I'm, I'm type 4 C. And it's like, honey, stop. <laughs> these people will fool you because these people don't even want to own up to their own groups. So... That was something I had to learn the hard way because I spent a lot of time on Pinterest, you know, researching how does, you know, hair types and how, which, what are my hair types and, you know, how will my hair look like if I'm doing a certain hairstyle and stuff like that and whatnot and whatnot and whatnot. So that was kind of hurtful. It was kind of disencouraging to be trying out, you know, different hairstyles and finding out my hair does not curl that way or, you know, it doesn't style that way or it doesn't respond to the hairstyle in the manner of which you know, the person who claims to be 4C, his hair does. Like, it was kind of confusing. It, it kind of, um, 
was a demotivation for me because I was kind of like, what's wrong with my hair? Why doesn't my hair curl the way other people's hair curls? And to bring, this is a conversation that a lot of people may fight us, but 4C hair does curl. I don't know who told people 4C hair don't curl. We curl. It's just that, you know, I was a tightly coins, tightly coins, tightly... But we curl. We have definition, okay? So now that we've cleared up that, we can move on to our next. The other thing is hairstyles. I had thought that when I started my natural hair journey, I will be doing hairstyles left, right, and center. I spent at least about six months of my natural hair journey wearing head wraps. Yeah, I was still dealing with shrinkage at the time. So I spent a lot of time wearing head wraps. Um, right now, even even now, I'm not ex I'm not experimented when it comes to hairstyles like. I will choose a hairstyle on Sunday on my wash day and that will be my hairstyle for the whole week until the next wash day. And most of the time it's always a protective hairstyle and it's something that I know is not going to, you know, damage my hair or stuff like that because I do believe in the low manipulation method, the low manipulation rule. So sometimes having to part my hair left, right and center, I just feel like that's just too much. That's too much. Let's stop. We don't do that here. So... Yeah, like most of the time you won't even have the energy to be styling your natural hair. You'll just literally pick one hairstyle, one protective hairstyle and stick to it. A lot of people I do know, they, you know, they do braids or they'll do conros and then they just wear their protective weaves. So yeah, that's <clears throat> something that I experienced myself. And it's, it's interesting. It's really interesting because I thought I would be like Zoe. I'd be, you know, today I've got my ponytails, tomorrow I've got braids, you know. I'm a different person every day, but I'm the same person. I'm Dinkley every single day, so. Yeah. This one, this is the fifth one, um, which is something that kind of, I guess in a way I knew about it, but I didn't really know what it meant. Because I've always heard that people say, oh, you know, natural hair is fragile. And I was like, what do you mean? Now I know. This thing is fragile. This thing doesn't want a lot of things. He doesn't want you to be always touchy touchy always mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. distance social distance okay um one of the reasons why i'm saying that is because a lot of you hear that you know in order for you to retain your hair length you have to practice low manipulation and stuff like that because we know that hair breaks natural hair breaks it'd be breaking every day it'd be, it'd be snapping all the time and i've experienced this when i dyed my hair black last year in august does this mean i'm gonna not dye my hair again no yeah i want to do it again <laughs> but i'll i'll let you guys know about that um so that was something that i had to learn the hard way because after i dyed my hair what i started noticing is that my hair had a lot more knots to it every morning even though i was wearing my satin head wraps to go to bed um I still woke up with a lot of um, knots and when I was doing my hair wash routine, when I detangle my hair with my conditioner and my white tooth comb, I would literally have hair falling off the size of, you know, um, what do you call it? a golf ball. Like a, yeah, like it would be this amount of hair falling off and that was quite frightening and I honestly thought that my hair would fall off completely because I was like, I don't really give it up. I was just there like, you know, if it falls, it falls. But luckily enough, I had products that were actually helping to rejuvenate my hair. So I didn't have to struggle that much because right now, as we speak, my hair, um, like when I washed my hair today, it didn't, I didn't experience like a lot of breakage. Like, to be honest, I think there was just about like not more than 10 knots that fell off and there was that and i do think that is a major improvement so i'm really grateful but i still want to dye my hair so clearly i didn't learn my lesson um the last thing is um this is something that i only started recently experiencing which is negative comments towards people with natural hair like People will be asking you like, oh, don't you just want to like, I don't know, braid it or relax it? Because it, it doesn't look, you know. And it's like, oh, mind your damn business. Who asked you? Yeah. Like, who asked you? And I've heard a lot of people actually talk about this way. Pe they're told, you know, that even in the natural hair community that their hair is not appealing and blah, 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 and blah, 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 blah. And to actually experience it firsthand, it's kind of disencouraging to be honest because you'd literally be hearing it from black people and it's like honey you and your relaxed hair looking like 
five years. What, what's going on with you? Like, I'm not trying to fight you, but why are you coming at me? Why are you coming at me and my pineapple? What's wrong with you, with your five years? So, yeah, that was something that I had to learn quite recently that I might have to defend myself. Or sometimes I don't even necessarily have to defend myself because, you know, some people's ignorance is, you know, their own problem. Um, I do not need to braid my hair unless I want to. I do not need to wear a weave unless I want to. And I certainly do not need to relax my hair because I'm allowed to have a preference for my own hair. And, yeah, for the mere fact that I have to defend myself is just baffling. It's just shocking. So... Those are some of the few things that I have learned as a natural hair girly girl person. And if you guys have experienced anything similar or something that I haven't mentioned, you're more than welcome to put it in the comment section below and let's talk about it. I do feel like these are some this is something that we need to talk about as natural. Because like we always coming in here with weird expectations, but nobody okay, not nobody ever really tells us, but like, you know, but now we're putting it on the table. Now we're talking about it that what are the some of the few things that you could expect or some of the things that you do need to know about being natural before actually starting your natural hair journey because it's scary out here. It's really scary. Do not be traumatized, child. I'm here. <laughs> I'm here to help a sister out or a brother out, you know. We're all about diversity here. So I hope you guys like this video. Please do not forget to subscribe. Do not forget to like. Do not forget to hit that notification bell so you're notified every time I upload a new video. And I really hope I will see you guys next time. Good night.